Douglas Cartland, a retired police detective hired by a woman named Claudia Wolf to locate a peculiar teenager by the name of Heather Mason. Little did he know, though, he was nothing more than a pawn in her game, just like the girl he was tasked to find. As we journey through Silent Hill 3, we encounter Douglas, a middle-aged man who seemingly cannot stop following Heather. In fact, he is the first human encounter we have in Silent Hill 3, and also the last, depending on the ending that the player earns. But in regular Silent Hill fashion, the less we know of a character, the more cryptic they seem. Let me provide a little bit of background on Douglas before we take a look at his most important scenes. Ten years before the events that take place in Silent Hill 3, Douglas was a police detective stuck in a troubled marriage. As a police detective, Douglas undoubtedly dealt with cases of homicide, assaults, and robberies. In one week, he could go from investigating a simple burglary to analyzing footprints in a room painted with blood. While not said exactly when, Douglas had a son who died after a bank robbery gone wrong. It is said his motive was to help his family due to financial issues that were going on. Douglas internalized that loss as his own fault. If he had a better position in life, his son wouldn't have attempted something so impulsive and dangerous in hopes of stabilizing his failing family dynamic. After the loss of not only his son but his divorced ex-wife, Douglas decided to handle things in his own way. He retired from his job as a police detective and became a private investigator instead. Police detectives purely focus on crime investigations while private investigators take on a suit of different activities. While not explicitly stated, Douglas probably began his career as a private investigator after retirement for not only more money, but with no family to go home to anymore, investigation was all he knew. Yeah, I guess I was. Anyway, I'm coming home now. Oh, I didn't get that thing you asked me to. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will. I love you too, Dad. Heather, I need to speak with you. My name is Douglas Cartland. I'm a detective. A detective? Really? Well, nice talking to you. Hold on. There's someone that wants to meet you. Just let me have an hour. No half an hour of your time. My daddy always told me not to talk to strangers. This is very important. It's about your birth. I'm not interested. Are you still following me? Do I have to scream? Sorry. I'll wait here. In the first scene, we see Douglas stalking Heather in the most obvious of manner possible. As he tries to talk to Heather, his speech is very vague. This period of talking to a random teenager about their birth would put anyone's weirdo radar on high. With how awkward this situation went, it's safe to assume that Douglas at this time has little to no idea how his actions will later affect the story. The second time Douglas is encountered is after the brutal death of Harry Mason, Heather's father. 
He is blamed for Harry's death, which is rightfully so, but unlike many characters in the series and in real life, Douglas can admit to himself and Heather that this without a doubt is a byproduct of Claudia. I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything. I'm fine, so just get out of here and leave me alone already! Calm down. I just... Calm down? How am I supposed to do that? My father is dead! He's murdered! Get out! This is all your fault! If it weren't for you... I'm sorry. Then go! If it'll make you feel better, I will. We watch as Heather mourns over the death of her father as Douglas stands beside her, fully aware of his actions that caused another's demise. This scene does show some significance in Douglas's character. Not only does he take responsibility for Heather's loss, but we see he also sympathizes with her. <sighs> I'm sorry, Dad. Do now. I'm going to Silent Hill. What's in Silent Hill? I don't know. Do you think it's safe? Of course it isn't. I don't know what kind of hell is waiting for me there, but I've got no other choice. I don't care about God or Paradise, if that's what she believes, then fine. But she won't get away with what she did. When I find her, I'll kill her myself. Revenge doesn't solve anything. Maybe not, but that's what I'm going to do. How you gonna get there? None of your business. I'll give you a ride. I don't need your help. Yeah, but it's too far to walk. Besides, I'm partly responsible for this. I'll bring the car around back. Come by and we'll finish saying goodbye. You know, you might die too. That's fine. Nobody's gonna cry over my grave. With the loss of his son and ex-wife, we can see here that Douglas is truthful in that statement. He was simply trying to do his job for a client, and somehow he ended up bringing pain and suffering onto another human being. Notice how Douglas says he has nothing to lose. We know that his family is gone, but this line could be taken in one of two ways. I see this as him stating that he has no excuses for what he has done, so helping Heather going forward is his only choice if he seeks repentance. Another interpretation of this line could mean that he simply does not care anymore. But my money is on the first meaning, as it is clear that he does care about making things right. As this scene plays out, we learn more about the backstory of Heather. But as a Douglas analysis video, we see that Douglas has in a way switched roles. He is no longer a detective doing his job, but more so a guardian in a way to Heather. It started raining. Why are you sleeping? I'm awake. You cold? What's the deal with Silent Hill anyway? It used to be a nice, quiet little town. But now... You've been there? Once. 
on the missing persons case. Never did find him. But I'll tell you, that's one screwed up town. My line of work, you hear a lot of nasty rumors. I was born and raised there. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. No offense taken. But I think Claudia's trying to do the same thing again. And I've been chosen as the sacrifice. You've got some kind of power in YouTube? Just like earlier in the video, it appears Douglas doesn't know much about Heather other than Claudia wanting her back to Silent Hill. It's beginning to become very difficult to feel angry against Douglas since he just seems to be a man caught up in a mess. I never had a chance to tell you tell you how happy you made me. <sighs> After the car ride, Douglas is coming off more and more as a father-like figure to Heather. Perhaps he is subconsciously doing this as a small atonement to the death of Harry, which he knows he helped caused. I'm going to head for that Leonard guy's house. You check out the hospital. You got the map, right? Yeah. You gonna be okay alone? I'm not a child, you know. Are you sure it's not you who's afraid to be alone? <sighs> You're right. I am afraid. 50 something years old. I had never seen nothing like this. I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> More like a nightmare, I'd say. <sighs> yeah. I want to wake up and have a smoke already. Meet me back here when you finish looking around the hospital. Okay? Roger. find the girl and you performed serviceably what is it now you lied to me about heather lady i don't like being used lie what lie that heather was kidnapped from you but it's true she was originally one of us that man, Harry Mason, stole her away and kept her hidden from us. Yeah, but she says she was happy. Douglas has finally put the pieces together as to what really has gone on with Claudia. He realizes that Claudia tricked him, causing him to destroy a teenager's life. Claudia spun things on Harry to make it seem as though he was the evil man that took Heather away from her to abuse. She was brainwashed by him. Deceived because her true self had not yet awoken. She carries God within her. But when Alessa, mother of God, truly awakens... Yeah? What's gonna happen? She will usher in the eternal paradise. <laughs> what kind of place is that? A place with no pain, no hunger, no sickness, no old age. There will be no greed or war, and all will live by God's grace alone. No this, no that, no nothing. A paradise for castrated sheep, maybe. Sounds pretty boring. I pity you. You still don't understand. Notice how Douglas isn't buying what Claudia is trying to sell. Mistakes have been made that he cannot take back, but he wants nothing to do with Claudia's delusions. 
You're going to kill me? Is it really so easy for you? I've done it before. I cannot find exact information on that line, but as a detective in a police force, perhaps Douglas is meaning he has killed before, but only as self-defense. He could also be implying in some way his actions that led to Harry's death. While he did not directly kill Harry, he involuntarily caused his death. Oh, then I truly do pity you. Douglas! You're late. Are you hurt? I can't move my right leg. I think it's broken. I'll call an ambulance. What? I don't think one will come. Don't worry. I'm used to it. You. <sighs> you old fool! Getting yourself hurt like that? Notice Heather's tone after encountering the hurt Douglas. She sounds angry but mainly just concerned for his well-being. Meaning even though Douglas's actions early on in the game were suspicious, she knows at this point that Douglas truly didn't mean to do what he did to her. He genuinely means to try and atone for his mistakes which is something all of us struggle with at times. Sorry. Why did you have to do that for me? What will I do if you die? What will we do if this god thing gets born? <laughs> Come on. How powerful could a god from a dump like this be? <sighs> I'm sure it'll be no big deal. Yeah, but anyway, something's gonna happen. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'd all be better off if it did. But if this is our God of Mercy axe, I don't want to see any more of it. That's a pretty good reason to risk my life, don't you think? Plus, I'm just an old fool, right? You think you're Superman or something? You know... I always wanted to be him. Besides, yeah. I want to help you out. You don't have to feel responsible. I know it's not your fault. You, you remind me of my son. This line explains the switch in Douglas's behavior since the first scene. As Heather progresses through her journey, Douglas naturally became more a father-like figure to her, or guardian if you would prefer. Perhaps he saw similar traits in Heather as he did with his son, but unlike the son he was unable to help, he is willing to die to not repeat the past once again. You said nobody was going to cry for you. Dead people don't cry. Stupid kid got himself shot robbing his bank. But why? Maybe because his pop was a penniless good for nothing. Who knows? Anyway, now I guess I'll never find out. <sighs> Sorry. I shouldn't have said you reminded me of a guy like you. <laughs> well, maybe if you had compared me to your daughter. <laughs> Listen. I'll take care of the rest. You stay here and I'll be back when it's over. You'll be okay by yourself. Hey, no problem. <sighs> Besides, my dad's not around anymore. So only I can do this. With the death of God, the nightmare of Silent Hill 3 is finally over, and depending on the player's choices, Heather and Douglas can walk away with a happy ending. If one choices were poor, however, only Heather will escape Silent Hill alive. 
Notice how happy Heather is towards Douglas in the good ending? Even though Douglas was wounded when he faced Claudia, Heather has accepted that the events that took place wasn't his fault. Throughout the game, Douglas never gave off any red flags or questionable behavior to make her think otherwise. He was just an honest man who was tricked into doing a wrong thing. I do find it fascinating how simple Douglas's character is. With his normalcy amongst the other characters of Silent Hill 3, he may appear bland. But it's within this blandness, so to speak, that helps him stand out against the other characters that crosses Heather's path. And with that, I thank you guys once again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any character recommendations for the future, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And I'll see you guys, as always, in the next one.